This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, Beelzebub has the devil put aside for me. I drove with the devil. Pocket Cast maybe dancing with the devil? Really? That's interesting because I'd heard one hell of a story about Tetris. Dancing with the devil? Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 194 for Thursday, the 15th of November, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and sometimes have guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, we're your geeks. Bad Weeb just to subscribe to our Twitch channel at, ritual, at twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Um, and man, it's... God, it's been a week. It's been a week. I'm excited about all kinds of things that I'm not going to talk about tonight, but I'm really excited. Yay! <laughs> it has indeed been a week. It's been a full week since we have been able to talk to our wonderful audience to include Bad Weave. Thank you for subscribing to the show. Um, <laughs> man, uh, you know what excited me this week? Um, uh, Queen. 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 Oh, you know oh. That, you know that you know that new band, the hot new band, that band that's the hotness. Queen. Um. It's well, a it, guy named Freddie Mercury. If we were in high school, they'd be the hot new band from twenty years ago, because that's exactly <laughs> how that went. Uh, like everybody was like, "Oh my God, this song, Bohemian Rhapsody, is so amazing." Oh my God, yeah, thanks, where did Wayne, thanks Wayne's World? Yeah, where, where did Wayne's World find this stuff? And uh, I was one of. I I don't know of anyone. You know, I might be wrong about you, but at least for me, it seemed like I was the only one my age that knew who the hell Queen was and had an appreciation for their music beforehand. Uh, you find yourself in a smaller <laughs> group because, <laughs> dude, uh, Wayne's World actually introduced me to Queen. Uh, see, I, I, I had a Queen t-shirt in like fifth grade and people made, made fun of me because of Freddie, Mer- Freddie Your Mercury. Your mom was a hippie. Of course you <laughs> had a Queen t-shirt when you were in middle school. <laughs> and it wasn't even like a long sleeve t-shirt and it wasn't a short sleeve t-shirt. It was a mid sleeve t-shirt. What the fuck is a mid sleeve? Like it, elbow link? Yeah, it just goes down the elbow. Is that even a thing? Was it, it also like seven sizes too large? For, was it like a quad lar- quad X no, large? No, no, no. It, it fit me. It fit me. Uh, that, that's how things were in the late 80s. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's probably California. Cause so I, so I, guess, a, I guess no, you no. saw the movie then. <gasps> yes, dude. I saw, I saw Bohemian Rhapsody. I've heard mixed reviews. Give me your thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, right off the bat, thumbs up. Nice. Good deal. Both. It, it was a good movie. So I will go ahead and. And, and, and for the people that are new to the show, because I know there's a couple of them out there that are new to the show. The thumbs up, thumbs down is not your normal thumbs up, thumbs down. The rating goes like this. It goes from two thumbs down to one thumb down to one thumb up to two thumbs up. That's the scale. It's a four point scale. There's no middle ground. You have to have an opinion one way or the other. And it's yes. either really good, really bad, or just good or just bad. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I'm dude. I'm giving this two thumbs up because, okay. So t- to caveat, there are some historical inaccuracies. A movie with historical inaccuracies. I know. Yeah. Um, there are some historical inaccuracies. Inaccuracies. Some things are a little bit out of order. Uh, some things are like, eh, all right. It wasn't that guy. It was this other guy. Right. Well, ed- editorial changes happen, and that's h- that's how drama is brought into movies. And and uh, exactly for storytelling purposes, you right. have to kind of, you know, because uh, like your life story might be interesting in four pages, but if you tell the actual <laughs> version of history, you know, all forty years of it, yeah, it's not gonna be that interesting. So, uh, all right, so they made their they made their editorial choices, right? And I'm okay with them. Because the story of Queen was told. Mm -hmm. Story of Freddie Mercury is told. And the things that matter were gotten right. Um, Regardless of history, yes, I think overall history was done justice minus the couple of inaccuracies, right? You can nitpick anything to death. Mm -hmm. But the things that mattered the most, Freddie Mercury was portrayed by Rami Malek absolutely perfectly. Hmm. Had every 
single gesture, every nuance of the man down to a science. He talked like him. He sung like him. He moved like him. He was dead on perfect. And the other thing that's probably the most important thing about this movie was Queen's music. Mm. It was spot on and perfect. And I enjoyed this movie so much. Like I just, when it ended, usually, so took the family to see the movie. Mm -hmm. Usually when a movie ends, whether it's a, you know, Marvel movie, a star Wars movie, a Jurassic world movie, a fuck, whatever it is. Right. After it's over, we're going to talk about it and, you know, talk about, you know, maybe theories for a sequel or maybe like how this character, eh, it would have been nice to see this character do this other thing instead of the way that they went and blah, 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 blah. The entire car ride home from this movie, nobody said a word. It wasn't because anyone was pissed about the movie. It wasn't because uh, just they didn't like the movie or whatever. It was just because everyone was 100% satisfied with what they just experienced. And there wasn't really anything to say. So was it you, Steph, and the boys? Yes. Nice. And yeah, wonderful movie. The next day... I did nothing but immerse myself in Queen. <laughs> I listened to, I think, the entire catalog of Queen. <laughs> I watched a bunch of shit on YouTube of, like, interviews with the band mm-hmm. and, like, little historical documentary things. And I'm pretty much, like, I'm available for interviews now. Like, if a Rolling Stone wants to call <laughs> me, uh, they need, like, an expert on Queen. Yeah. Like, um, I'm available. So <laughs> you've, you've, you've done everything but meet Freddie Mercury. Yeah, you know, I mean, I tried to, uh, you know, I got out the Ouija board. I tried right, to, right. Uh, like, make that meeting happen. Jumped on the Wayback didn't... Machine, didn't work. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so this movie, originally, they, they had someone else slated to play Freddie Mercury. And yeah, they had Borat. Yeah. They had Borat lined up. They, and he was all all set to go until they got to the part where Freddie Mercury dies. And the band was like, okay, so for the second half of the movie, and he was like, what? No. So he dropped out because... Sasha Baron Cohen wanted this basically to be the story of Freddy, not the story of Queen. Right. But the band had this whole idea where there'd be a second act to the movie, or a full act to the movie after. And he was like, well, no, that's nobody... That's important to you, but... That's not the story. That's not the part that people want to know. Right. So basically the opposite of what I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're correct. So Br- Brian May, so the lead guitarist of mm. Queen, yeah, was dead set on this being the Queen movie, not the Freddy movie. Right. And yeah, there was a whole, there's a whole other era of Queen post Freddy. Yeah. And uh, spoiler alert, Freddy dies at the end <laughs> of the movie. <laughs> um, we don't actually like, you know, the, the, like there's no funeral. We don't actually see him die or whatever. It's in the, after the movie, like after, you know, the fade to black credits roll, mm-hmm. there's like a, you know, and this date, you know, Freddie Mercury right. succumbed to blah, blah, blah. Right. So it's a, it's like a mid, not, not even mid credits. It's like, you know, just before credits roll, they kind of give that little, you know, um, postscript postscript. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's cool. Um, this is one that I definitely want to see. I think I'm the only one in the family that really wants to see it besides Amber because I, uh, as little much as I raised her, I raised her right. And, That's what I was um, going to say. You raised that girl right. <laughs> <laughs> of course she wants to see it. Um, yeah. So we were playing Dead Mouse on the way back from a point we just had. And she was like, what is Dead Mouse 5? And I was like, That's Dead Mouse. She was like, That's how he spells it? I was like, yeah. She goes, Wow, I got a friend of mine that has that as his like tag or whatever. And so I was instantly cooler than my daughter for a brief moment in time because I listened to Dead Mouse and she didn't. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. Middle age is weird. Um, oh, God. It okay, is. so I watched the movie too. Well, it wasn't a movie so much as a kind of a documentary. And this is my geek thing of the week because I completely, I, I watched this. I loved it. I recommend everyone watch it. It's called The History of Tetris. It's on mm-hmm. YouTube. It's about 40 minutes long, and it is amazing. It's almost it's, as good as the game. It's about an hour long. Is I it? opened it 
earlier today mm-hmm. when I first got home, I was like, oh, look, Amos added something to the notes. Let me see this YouTube video he posted. Oh, my God, it's an hour. <laughs> Don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> Too long to watch. It worth it? Should I, after this show ends, should I sit down and watch this hour-long documentary about Tetris? Sell me on it. Go. The movie breaks down the facts of the acquisition of the rights of Tetris. And there's more drama in the acquisition of Tetris than there was in the Cold War. Wow. I'm not surprised that that's content of this video because I did, when I opened the YouTube video, I kind of dragged the, you know, the little slider across to get a Mm. little, like, see if I can gather anything from this. And it looked like a Cold War documentary. It, it it's yeah it, well it's done because it, everything happened in the cold war between u.s british and russian programmers and licensees and shit um and uh we love fortnite and raid and and rmp raid well i i hate fortnite uh because it, it, it's a plague <laughs> in my home although that's more the the process but of the game we love w scottis one for yeah. bringing his party over to the rmp party Hell thank yeah. you w scottis one for the raid <laughs> Yeah, um, it, it's just if you if you enjoy Tetris, if you like video game history, this is one that's done exceptionally well. It's done as objectively as possible, although there are some areas where you just kind of have to go with what the people say because nobody's talking about some of this stuff, you know. Um, yeah, it, it was really good. I enjoyed it. It was I during the the whole the whole video. I didn't sit there and go. Man, when's this going to be over? Which is probably why I didn't realize it was an hour long. You know, uh, yeah, it's just yeah. it's really good. And if you're into it's like the, the yeah, if you're into the dark world of, of the underbelly of video games and how things actually work and and <laughs> this backstabbing and and everything, it, it was it was good. It's really good. There's it's I'm not an action it. scenes, but it's it's really good. Yeah, I'm gonna check this out. I I, I like history. I I'm a sucker for like, a, you know, the, the history of Atari and how that came about. And yeah. Oh, I actually, that- I, I, I found this because I was watching the history of super Mario brothers two. Oh and- my gosh. I, yeah, I watched a video probably, I don't know, two months ago, probably yeah. the same video that you watched about Mario two. It's pretty interesting uh, with the, yeah, the, the Japanese sequel yeah. games. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I, I, I enjoy it. Link to this video will be in the show notes and it's pretty awesome. So, Perfect. I cannot wait to watch this thing. Awesome. Dude. All right. We listen to a lot of podcasts. We're not, we don't, we don't just do a podcast. We listen to podcasts. Yep. Our platform of choice, or at least mine is thanks to you <laughs> is pocket Cast. Do you still use pocket Cast as your primary vehicle of podcast listening? I do not. I have switched almost completely to overcast. Oh my. Okay. So pocket Cast, huge, improvement okay, okay. over uh, I will Apple. I, I well yeah well well I mean duh right <laughs> the reason I switched to overcast from pocket cast was not only can I listen to an episode without subscribing um it's also easier to input oh thanks Scrooge um it's also easier to uh whoa oh, shit Navigate. Um, uh, I don't know. Do like it's just it's, it's easier. To, it's easier to add um, feeds that aren't in a directory. So like Patreon feeds and things like that. Because right. mm-hmm. with 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 Pocket Cast, at least with the old version, you there's two places you can put in a feed. One of them will accept a URL that's like a Patreon link or whatever. The other one will not. And there's mm-hmm. no difference between the two. And I kept screwing it up. So I went over to Pocket Cast. I saw a couple of the features there. The add to list and the ability to make an instant playlist is a little bit easier. It's just, it's a, it's really a flavor thing. Do I like strawberry or do I like cherry? Which one do I, do I like? Cause they're both really strong. They're way, both insanely better than the default app. Um, yeah. and it just happens to be right now. My, my preferred flavor is overcast. Yeah. So pocket cast just updated like three days ago or something like mm. that. Tell me released, about it. Released version 7.0. My biggest gripe and complaint about pocket cast six point whatever is that I cannot just pick an episode of a podcast and check it out. Mm. I have to subscribe before right. I can interact with that podcast at all. Mm-hmm. That has been fixed. Nice. That is gone. Nice. No longer have to subscribe. However, Oh, this is a brand new version. This is not 6.9. This is 7.0. 
They Facelift. rewrote the code on this thing. <laughs> I have to give them credit. I didn't. I didn't lose any of my subscriptions. I didn't lose my place in any of the the, the shows I was listening to at the time. But my God, it took me about a half hour to figure out how to navigate the damn thing. You remember when when Microsoft Office switched from the menu based to the ribbon to the tap based buttons and shit? Mm-hmm. I hated that hated the new office format is it better than the old format yes almost objectively yes but i still fucking hated it because i was so used to the old way i could do it probably blind i can see why you'd have some problems with this interface yeah not that it's bad it's actually it's actually snappier than it used to be yes because i still have all my subscriptions objectively better like I still, I didn't, I didn't yes. uninstall the app. I know it's a it lot is snappier. so much better objectively, but my God almighty, it took me forever. I was yelling at my phone. Where, where is my downloaded you, podcast? You, 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 you were drinking the strawberry. You weren't ready for the switch to cherry. <laughs> so when you took that was. swig of cherry, you're like, what the hell? No, the, no, it's so, fine. It's, it's a good flavor. Oh, but where's my so strawberry? What, what I would say, what I would say to, <laughs> to someone who enjoys listening to podcasts, are frustrated with their current podcast app and have never tried Pocket Casts. Mm. I recommend to anyone Pocket Casts 7.0 because if you weren't used to the shittier old way, you won't have any problems with the current interface. Right. <laughs> It's so much better. It is so smooth. It's great. It was already a great app, but they improved. Which, which version of it. iOS was it where you and I were both like, no, everything's everything's better, but I don't like it. <laughs> uh, I think it was like seven. Is Whenever they got rid of the skeuomorphic stuff, when uh, I think it was yeah, seven. It was like that. Maybe seven, eight. I don't know. It was yeah. just, uh, maybe, I think it was eight because that's the first time I got on the Gold Master before release and I was telling you about it. And you're like, well, what's better? I was like, it's all better. I just don't like it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, what yeah. don't you like about it? I don't I don't know. I just don't it's not it's not the phone I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not my the, the blanket that I go to sleep with every day. Right, right, right. Um speaking yeah. speaking of things that are fine but they're not what, what we want, I took the truck in this week for repairs because of uh, a little accident, a little collision with my garage. Oh yeah. Um and uh I got a rental uh, care of USAA because they're awesome. Hashtag USAA is awesome. Yep. Yep. I turned in my Dodge Ram 2500 power wagon and the rental they gave me, it was a truck. It's a Ford. Okay. Oh. Ford what? Ford F-150. Okay. I don't like it. Yeah. What's wrong with it? It's a, well, first of all, it's a Ford. So. Well, okay. I mean, other than just, you know, blind fucking pack mentality, brand hate. That, well, that's not, uh, well, I have brand hate because of other reasons. It's justified. But either way, it's a Ford. So it's, we, we move on from there. I still think. I drive a Ford. I love the fuck out of my Mustang. No, you are right. There, every brand, no matter what they have, even Saturn has a car that's pretty awesome. Um, Ford. <laughs> Ford has the Mustang. Uh, everything else should just disappear. I don't I see. <laughs> now I think it's very subjective. <laughs> no, I know it, as many people. I agree. Is, it is completely subjective. But for, <laughs> from my subjectivity, Ford can just go away except for the Mustang. They should just put everything they have in the Mustang. I need reasons, though. Like, why? <laughs> uh, cruise, cruise. Okay, let's narrow this. Go. Let's narrow this. Go. Okay. What was wrong with this truck that you didn't like? Okay. First of all, the seat is is very uncomfortable. It's not nearly as big as the seat in my truck. Okay. It's just smaller. So that means the pressure point on your thigh when you're sitting down isn't spread out as much. So there's more like pressure further up. You, like in the chair you're sitting in right now, your leg is laying flat on the chair. I mean, sure. Now imagine if the chair was just four inches wide. The seat part was only four inches deep or whatever. It's a okay. totally different chair. So didn't like the chair. Okay, fine. 
<laughs> right? The button layouts don't make sense. Like I had to look like for five minutes to find out where the fog light button is because it's nowhere near the freaking headlight button. Right. So, the, well, this sounds like the Pocket Cast upgrade. Like it's objectively better. I'm just not used to this way. This is objectively worse, and it's subjectively worse. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That's one man's opinion. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've never driven either your truck or a Ford truck. Yeah. Uh, at least in, in any sort of recent memory. So it's, I can see why people like him because it does sit and feel like a car, except you're sitting upright a little bit instead of like, l- kind of like leaning back in a car. Uh, um, uh, but it also drives like a car, which if you are used to driving a truck is not a good thing because cars and oh. trucks drive very differently. Yeah, I mean trucks. You got the um, you know the the slower to build, just kind of low end power uh, kind of thing, where right. you know the car is going to be very snappy, um, much quicker, yeah, uh, to, to achieve speed and stuff like that. But is you know doesn't it's, feel. I mean, it's not just that, but like the steering will have a different a different feel to it, and it, it's it's just I just I don't like so how they've saying, done it. What you're saying is that the Ford pickup has no power. Um, it actually does for the first little bit. I, I don't know if it has any torque. I couldn't tell you at all if it has that's torque. What I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have like the low end power. That you yeah, no, it. it's, it's like a car. <laughs> like when you want to go, it starts going like you can get, you can get off the line. I can, I can get this truck off this the line. This is probably the worst condemnation I've ever heard of a pickup truck ever. Right. Is that this thing drives like a car. It, it really does, but it's shitty. <laughs> uh, oh man. Okay. All right, so, yeah. so, so you get this. Are, do you are do you still have it? You yes, still have the, yes, I do. I have it until probably about Wednesday next week. Oh my gosh! Mm. All right, do you, do you think you're going to grow to love it, or mm. is it just like are you are you going to maybe crash it on purpose? <laughs> Thought about <laughs> it. <laughs> maybe it's going to crash you on purpose. It could. I've been talking a lot of shit about it. Um, <laughs> it there. Oh my gosh! I just I just don't like it. The doors, I mean, the, the cab is bigger, so, like, there's more space in the cab, mm. which should be a good thing, except the seats are smaller, so I don't know if the cab is actually bigger or if there's just more room between the seats because the seats are smaller. Because your big old ass doesn't quite fit right? No, my ass fits fine side to side. It's, <laughs> it's the front to back that doesn't fit very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Cruz says the, the new F-150s are aluminum body, so they do pick up faster. This is true, and this is one of the reasons I don't like Ford trucks. My Dodge is a solid steel. It's the frame is steel. Like you, you there's uh, uh, there's videos online where you can go through and they got a, a brand new uh, Dodge and a brand new Ford, and you take the Dodge over in it, uh, this like lumpy road or whatever, this little rail, and you can go and, and torque the truck as much as possible, and you can still open the tailgate. And you go to the Ford, and you can't even open the back doors of the Ford, let alone the tailgate, because the whole body moves, it it bends, it flexes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, but again, trucks ride different than cars, and this F one fifty rides like a car, and it's not comfortable. I don't like it. All right. Yeah. This, Damn. This is why the military doesn't buy Fords anymore. <laughs> it's it's not. But for me, oh it is. man, uh, if only they made a movie about it. Um, be- you know, I I wouldn't even know how to convince them to make a movie about it because, well, they've got so many bad products as it is. I don't know why they would make a movie about this one. I but think- luckily there's so many uh, better subjects to make movies from. And uh, those movies show up in theaters and. Let's see how we're doing. <laughs> Welcome to your movie draft minute presented by Diamond Club TV for the week of November 12th, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. A lot of people cry whenever they cut onions. The trick is not to form an emotional bond. It's better for everyone. Let's go to the scoreboard. <laughs> Team Bond Squad is in last place thanks to Overlord's $12 million debut, bringing their total of $50.7 million. Team Movie Party's in fifth place with $61.7 million. Team Game Night's in fourth place with $146.5 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming 
including falls to third place with $211.7 million. Team Havoc drinks the girl in the spider's web and Dr. Seuss's The Grinch combined for second place with $250.7 million. And just edging them out with $256.5 million, it's Team Ritual Misery. That's your movie draft minute. I'll total the record as of November 14, 2018. Oh, yeah. What week is this? <sighs> Do you, this, um, hmm, I don't know, six, something like that. Hmm. We have been in first place since the beginning. Yes. I thought for sure this week we would be dropped down to second, if not third. Right. We're still in first, mm -hmm. barely, mm -hmm. but we are still even current. So Jay recorded that yesterday afternoon. So like 27 hours ago, something like that. Yet we're still about almost exactly $3 million in, in two first place above second. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not going to last. I, <clears throat> that's gone. Well, maybe. I don't know, dude. We're a week away from Ralph Breaks the Internet. Right. But th during the next week, we're going to get bounced out. We're not going to survive this weekend. By Jay's next movie draft minute. <laughs> I think we might still be in first place because we're going to have Ralph breaks the internet. Uh, uh, man, I... Mm, mm, mm. We might lose first place for a minute, for, but for we're going to be back in first place. Yeah, it's it's one week. One week we're going to take a dive. So our, our continuous streak, our, our, our eight week or nine week or whatever continuous streak will come to an end. But we'll be back in first place, and then Ralph basically has to ride out the internet, man. The Ralph has to has to has to have the staying power. That's what we need. We need Ralph. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and uh, Fitz points out in the chat that Bohemian Rhapsody did exactly what their team uh, needed it to do. Uh, the team, their team, being uh, Game Night, Game Night. Uh, Fitz and W. Scott is one. Yeah, dude. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody has made some money. It it's brought in 110 million plus. Yeah, um, but see, the problem is uh, it's still sitting at about four million dollars per dollar spent. The best deal so far in the draft is Night School, which we picked up for nine bucks as the second yeah. movie because I had had I'd heard that it was going to do good for a comedy. It has done exceptionally well at seventy six million dollars. True. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it just edges out a Star Is Born for dollar per uh, 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 a real dollar for fake dollar. Uh, yeah. value. Yeah. Yeah. Um, true. It, it star, a star is born has done excellently. Like it's the, what second, second highest grossing movie. Yeah. And it's also, and, and it's also ours. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's only to be beaten out by venom and that's a comic book movie. So, I mean, right. But I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is for a movie value per dollar. It's, yeah, yeah, it's second exactly. place. So we got yeah, the top two really values. Pay 28, Curly paid twenty eight for uh, for Venom. Yep. So I mean, yeah, dude, yeah. Uh, mm. it's fun. It's fun. We're gonna see how long we can stay on on top of this thing. <sighs> Man, maybe maybe they won't go out and see Grinch this weekend because they're waiting for uh, for Ralph next weekend. So we'll get a little <laughs> bit of. That's a what I'm hoping because Grinch Grinch is already doing what, what what's Grinch doing. Grinch has already pulled in eighty five million dollars. Yeah, yeah. And it's just getting started, dude. But they spent like, twenty eight on it. So and the have drink folks spent twenty eight on it. So the value isn't there, but oh man. It could be though. It might now, be no uh, this second weekend uh, We did leave like sixteen fake dollars, fake movie draft dollars on the table when we walked away. Like we true. we did have a chunk left, so we only got four movies, but Yeah, yeah. Man, we yeah, need we need five movies instead of four. Like I would, I would feel a lot better about this draft overall. Even yeah. if it's just one more garbage. If we movie. Do, yeah, if we just had a couple couple garbage. If Ralph had come earlier in the draft, we'd be we'd be. Oh, absolutely, because that was our that was our one. Yeah, we're walking away with this movie. Yeah, and, and the problem was we had all the money towards the end of the draft. We just there was nothing to spend it on because Ralph exactly. was like what second to last or whatever. Yeah, so, it was pretty late in the game. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Alrighty. Um, th well, that's, that's that. Um, Hey dude, we, do we have a game this week? Uh, we do, but I, I, I do want to tell people that, uh, patreon.com slash racial misery is a thing. 
Oh, well, that's that's one of the games is trying to get you to post a, an episode on there so we can continue the this, the, the uh, episodes. Uh, Since the episode that you recorded should have been posted last week or last month. So, it's, so I am I am a slave to my public. When my public says that I need to do a thing, it, it kicks me in the ass and makes me do a thing. Um, so, yeah, I will, <laughs> will definitely get that. So published very soon, <laughs> but what would be an in- incentive to me to like, you know, Hey, the public is speaking and you need to do the thing you're supposed to do mm. is if somebody from patreon.com slash ritual misery said, Hey, I'm your boss and I am telling you, you need to do this immediately. <laughs> well, yes, because you're giving me money. I will do what you say. So anyway, show that you give a fuck about ritual misery and give ritual misery a buck. It doesn't flow as well. If you give a fuck, give a buck. That's the saying. Patreon.com slash ritual. (laughs) Uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how that goes. Um, also if you have ideas on what we can do with the Patreon, um, to spice it up a little bit, we would love to know those ideas because well, Kent has negative time because he watches movies and sits around all day researching, queen and i have two jobs i'm doing right now so that's how that goes Uh, (laughs) yeah fitz says don't give the peasants power (laughs) oh my gosh uh don't threaten us with a good time that might be good advice but um anyway head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery and tell us whether or not patron uh patrons uh peasants as fitz says should have power anyway we got a game this week, bro. How about this? Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's game. Play with him. 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 We've got a game this week. It's called Comical Comic or Kent's Comedic Creation. Comical Comic. I love the alliteration. So Although, what you're going to do is you're going to tell me, is this a real comic book character or did I make it up? Oh, sweet. Yeah. So you're basically going to say real or fake. That's it. <laughs> Super simple. To- to the point. Todd McFarlane versus Kent. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not calling McFarlane out in particular. <laughs> it could be, it could be McFarlane. I will. I will. Hey, it hey, be, real it quick. Be, it could be a Kirby. It could be. We recently got a follow by Seriously Susan, the voice of Siri. Did we? Yeah. I don't know if it was the Ritual Misery account or my account, but one of us did. And holy shit, we need to pursue that and make that happen. Get her on the show. Can you imagine a, a stinger done by the voice of oh, Siri? Oh, it'd be amazing. All right, we're get so all right. So news flash, everybody. <laughs> not to, not to derail, derail your game, we're but gonna you have, know. we're gonna have Siri <laughs> on an episode of Ritual Misery podcast. She's been on our list forever, so it's gonna happen. That's yep, that's gonna happen. All right, Amos, <laughs> I've got ten comic book characters. I, th- I think Bad We've just got the title. He says, "Hey Siri, thanks for following our podcast." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Siri, subscribe to Ritual Misery Podcast. <laughs> Actually, that's probably going to trigger someone's phone when they listen to this. Uh, oh, well. Uh, I'm har- I'm you're welcome, because yeah. now you are subscribed to the Ritual Misery Podcast. All right, Amos, I'm going to name 10 comic book characters. Some of them are real. Some of them I made up. You're going to tell me if, if they are, in fact, real or, in fact, Bullshit that I made up. Are you ready? Uh, so we're going characters, not comics. Characters. Okay. Yes, these are all characters. Got it. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. Let's do this. <clears throat> Arm fall off boy has the ability to detach his own limbs, which he can then use as blunt weapons. His name is Arm fall off boy. Fake. You say that arm fall off boy is fake? I do. <laughs> it is in fact it is in fact a real comic book character. He is from DC Comics. That explains a few things. 
Uh, yeah. All right. So moving on. <laughs> Question number two. <gasps> Sewage Man is a villain that can spray liquid waste from his arms. Sewage Man. Fake. You say that Sewage Man is fake? Mm-hmm. Sewage Man is indeed fake. I made that shit up. <laughs> See what I did there? All right. Number three. <laughs> number three. The ficus. The ficus uses his ability to disguise himself as a houseplant and spy on criminals. The ficus. Fake. You are saying that that's fake. <laughs> yes. I made up the ficus. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next one. Danny the Street. Danny the Street is a living, sentient piece of urban geography. Literally a street. Danny the Street. I'm going to go real. <laughs> you think that Danny the Street is real. Yep. <sighs> yes. Danny, Danny the Street, also also from DC Comics, <laughs> is very much real. Uh, originated in uh, Doom Patrol. Anyway, it's a super complicated character. Involves teleportation and all kinds of other craziness. Um, very, but very much a real character. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, the the next one on our list, <laughs> the podcaster. The podcaster hypnotizes his victims with his voice and makes them send him money and valuables. The podcaster. I'm going to say that that is fake because it's too real. So it's too real to be a comic book character so that you so you think that the podcaster is fake. Right. Because it'd be like having a, a, a comic book character called the policeman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So regardless of your logic, you got to the correct response. Uh, the podcaster was made up by me. Mm. Um, trademark podcasting podcaster podcast trademark can't. Uh, no, eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know how that we know how that ends when you try to when you try to own all of podcasting. Yeah, it doesn't work real well for you. Not so much. All right, so number six, Matter Eater Lad. Matter Eater Lad is a superhero who is capable of eating literally anything. Matter Eater Lad. I'm gonna say real. You think Matter Eater Lad is real? He is indeed real. Tell me, uh, DC? DC again? Once again, <laughs> thank you, DC Comics, <laughs> for Matter Eater Lad. I was going to say, there's no way any of these so far are image. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean... Image had like six characters. Right, but they were all awesome. <laughs> all right. Next one. Uh-huh. Ice cream. Spelled E-Y-E dash S-C-R-E-A-M. I scream. Ice cream is a mutant who can turn into ice cream. I C E C R E A M. Ice cream is a mutant who can turn into ice cream. Can you use it in a sentence? Ice cream can turn into ice cream. <laughs> Country of origin? United States of America. Era. 20th century. <laughs> <laughs> then it's clearly fake. <laughs> You're saying that ice cream... <laughs> who can turn into ice cream is fake. 
I scream <laughs> is not a DC Comics creation. This is a Marvel <laughs> Comics creation that was in the X Men brand. This dude <sighs> infiltrated the X Mansion while while uh, Professor Xavier was using Cerebro during the birthday party for Kitty Pride. Uh, uh, Kitty Pride, also known as Shadow Cat, is having a birthday party. You, and you, anyway, you know you've run out of ideas when you have people turning into dessert. Yes. This, anyway, yeah, this dude actually broke into the X Mansion by turning into ice cream. <laughs> See, and I should have known it was a, a real one because you said uh, 20th century, not 21st century. So you didn't just make it up. Ah. Mm. Yep, I almost said it too, and I was like, "Yeah, no, there's no way. This is this is stupid. <laughs> this is even too stupid for DC." <laughs> All right, the next one. And for clarification, the only characters I enjoy out of DC are the Batman stuff. Yeah, you and most of us. Yeah, the next one is All Erector. The rest of stupid. Erector. Erector can engorge his penis to a monstrous size to use as a weapon. Does he then become Ejector? Erector. <laughs> <laughs> Is Erector real or fake? Um, I think chat froze. Um, I am going to go with fake. You think that Erector is not a real comic you would be correct you, i made up a rector you had a raging heart on that stopped you from pooping didn't you i mean uh let's not get too personal the next question moving on the next one rainbow rainbow boy mm. rainbow boy can fly at the speed of light and shape his rainbow trail at will. Rainbow boy. Rainbow boy can shape his rainbow trail at will. Yeah, and he can also uh, travel at the speed of light. Hmm. You gonna go fake? You gonna say that rainbow boy? Is fake. Yeah. Your response would be <laughs> incorrect. Rainbow boy. Rainbow boy. What do you think about now, dude? He said, "Yeah, he's a re rainbow. Rainbow boy is a real character. He used to be the the sidekick to Hydro Man <laughs> until he got spun off into his own comic. Um, rainbow boy also his powers only function in sunlight." <laughs> Uh, I didn't I didn't point that out in the uh, little mini description, but to combat that so that he could still be a superhero at night, he created his own like uh, uh, this like battery powered light thing. He carried that, a uh, flashlight. Basically, basically. <laughs> but it was like, I mean, come on. It was like a super advanced. Flashlight. Oh, my God. That, this, this is why I never got into comics, because shit like this came up. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. But anyway, so, yes, Rainbow right. Boy is very much real. Your final one, your final question. Lantern Lass. <laughs> Fist in the chat room says, sounds like a PC push for gay superhero. It's got to be true. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. Lantern Lass. Lantern Lass shoots light out of her eyes mm -hmm. so she can blind her enemies and see into their souls. Lantern Lass. This is the last one? This is the final one, yes. What's my Lantern score? Lantern Lass. What's my score? Uh, you have six correct mm. out of nine so far. So I've passed the class regardless. Yeah, I mean, just barely. This right. is this is whether or not you get grounded, or or if you're if you're if you're good. I mean, if you get a C, you know. If, if I get fine. if I get grounded, or if my Nintendo just gets taken away. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to say Lantern Lass is real. Lantern Lass, who can shoot lights out of her eyes so she can blind her enemies and see mm. into their souls, you say is real? Mm. Mm. I created Lantern Lass out of my own imagination. I doubt it. You probably dreamt that shit. So, <laughs> uh, see pre show of this episode, <laughs> patreon.com slash Richard Misery. Uh, yeah. So, okay, so I barely passed. Of, yeah, but you passed. You you beat the, uh, the, the you beat, basically beat the game. You beat the game. Woo-hoo. Six out of 10 is over 50%. You won. Um, congratulations. That was, that was fun to do. Uh, I had comic books in my mind a lot this week, uh, because unfortunately we lost Stan Lee at uh, the age of 95. I mean, we know where he is. We probably know where he is better now than we have for the last several years. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, he, he's gone. And if yeah. you go to his, to his official website, the real com, uh, it's, it's like the, it's just touching. It's just, it just says his, um, Basically, it says 1922 to 2018, Excelsior. Yeah. Excelsior, of course, uh, basically being his um, his tagline, his catchphrase. Uh, he's, he would say that at the end of almost anything that he did. Uh, I, I, Stan Lee first came into my uh, knowledge, my awareness uh, when I was a small child reading Spider-Man comics. There was always this this letter column called the the bullpen bulletin, right? It's like straight from the the offices of Marvel Comics, mm. right? And sometimes they would address you know reader feedback. Sometimes you know Stan would just you know say something that was on his mind, right? And he always started with uh, uh, "Dear True Believers" and always ended with "Excelsior." Mm. And that's kind of just been his, that's just been his thing. I grew up with the man. Uh, my next encounter with him was really the, the animated Spider-Man cartoon from the eighties because he was the narrator for that. He, mm. he opened every episode with, with, Hey, true believers. And like he would set up the story and Stan Lee was just a, a, a figure you know, from my childhood even. And then of course now everyone knows Stan Lee because the MCU movies have just like, you know, become mainstream pop culture. And Stan Lee of course is, uh, he has a cameo, a small, very small role cameo in every single Marvel movie since like 1989 or something like that. Yeah. So it's kind of a, he's basically a meme. Now, and, and, they, and everyone knows who he is. They pre recorded a bunch of them as well, right? For the cameos. Um, see, that's what I heard. Is that is that my understanding true? is that the final the final Stanley cameo is going to be in Avengers four. Uh so you know, whatever with the Infinity War Part Two or whatever it's gonna be called. Um, that comes out next spring, like mm-hmm. late late spring, early summer. Uh May is May, late spring or early summer. Whatever. Um, both. Yeah. So anyway, right, yeah, summer from kicks off Sandy, on Memorial gonna Day. Final. That's going to be his final cameo. Hmm. So we're going to get a couple more. We got Captain Marvel. We've got uh, the next Avengers film. Um, after that, I think that's. I think we're out of Stanley material. Hmm. So it's kind of sad. Uh, yeah. It's. It's. it's so to, I don't know. Too. It's. It's weird that he became pop culture mainstream. Because for me, as a as a nerd growing up as a, you know, you know, I don't know. I, f- I always felt like an outsider, but Stan Lee was kind of like a champion of the outsiders. And I kind of just like, you know, oh, Stan Lee is mine, <laughs> you know. And now that he's pop culture, it's like now I got to share him with everyone else, you know. But at the same time, it's kind of like the, you know, the, oh, the nerds get a voice now. And yay. Yeah. But I mean, I, I don't know. I got weird feelings about that. But anyway, <sighs> rest in peace, Stan. Yeah. Love you. You're going to be missed. And somebody check on Betty White. Indeed. We still need to get her on the show. I, I, think, I think the clock's ticking on it, that it, one. Yeah. 
That was my first thought when because we had just talked a couple weeks ago with uh, with Squid about you know yeah. Stan Lee and Biddy White and these old yes. people that are like the last remaining of this yep. t- time gone by that are, are so classic that we even know while they're still alive that they are classics. You know, George yeah. Burns was or not? Yeah, is it George Burns? Um, died like right, know, but he was another one because he was like ninety eight or whatever when he died. Like, oh yeah, no, dude, the dude was like three hundred years old. Yeah, um, it said that his secret to long life was smoking cigars and drinking whiskey every day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was my first thought. Was oh shit, somebody check on Betty White. I actually, I think I tweeted that. You um, did tweet that. You did. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> like that was. I was like, oh. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things, man. Like, we're hitting that age where all the people that we've heard of are going to start keeling over. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of – that's part of getting older, right? We're in our yeah. 40, 40s now, you know? So, like, all of the, the old people that we had growing up, like, they're all gone now. Yeah, Burt Reynolds. Yeah, like like our – you know, our contemporaries are, 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 are starting to go. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, how, but, th- tell, me, tell me how Burt Reynolds died before Sally Field. In what world does that make sense? <laughs> What's wrong with Sally Field? Oh my gosh! Anyway, uh, love you, Sally. Uh, be on our show. They, they, anyway, they should have just they should have hung out together like forever. Because in my mind, they're together. I've, like, got, I've got one final one final thing to add to the Stanley thing. For those that don't know what Excelsior means, it it basically it loosely means ever upward. Yeah. So when Stan would say Excelsior, it was about like, hey, everybody, let's, you know, celebrate. Let's like bring ourselves to a higher place. Let's be better than we were yesterday. Let's all like constantly strive for greatness. Yeah. Always go up. You know, and that's kind of what he meant with Excelsior. And for Excelsior to be used on his on his website in tribute to him not only speaks to that was his favorite word and he said it all the time, but also kind of speaks to his life. Like that's kind of how he, he always wanted to boost everyone. And, um, he reached out to the, the comic book nerds and showed everyone that, you know, you can be great. You're wonderful on your own. Uh, anyway, this is what it, this is what it means to be a hero. Strive to be a hero. Don't be a villain, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, um, Excelsior, ever upward. Yep. Um, hey, uh, we got bad news for you. No show next week, right? Because of uh, the old Thanksgivings. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna be spending time with family and yep. friends, and, Th- and that's not to know, say we won't. Like, that's not stuff. to say we won't stream at all. But the no regular show uh, planned. Nothing, nothing at all planned. But sometimes <laughs> after dinner, you get bored and just hop on and play some video games or something like that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. However, that does give us a week to finally catch up on all the recordings, Kent. So, <laughs> yes, yes. No show to prepare for next week means time to produce. Time <laughs> to forget to produce. Yeah, that's what that means. Um, <laughs> but uh, we will see you in two weeks, and uh, we, that'll be episode 195. So we're kind of on the back stretch of, of this 200 episode thing we got going on. Um, I don't want to downplay the importance of the streamathon. We need to really start pressing that and making that a thing. If you're already involved with it, if you've already given us some feedback, thank you very much. And be sure to start telling your friends. We, as it, as is always the case, everybody waits until the last second before they really start wanting to volunteer for things. And that just adds more stress and less hair to us. So yeah, um, it's, we need it. We need, might need some help with that. And it's- bit.ly slash streamathon 2018 sign up go there sign up you don't have to be a streamer Hmm. volunteer to do anything and it would be appreciated if you want to tell us what you have liked about the previous 200 episodes of this show it's yellow420.com slash rmp200 yep these links will be in the show notes. These links are about to go into the Twitch chat at twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Yep. Uh, do both of those things. Help us out. We've got major events coming up. New Year's Eve Streamathon is a month and a half away. 200th episode is about two months out from now. Both big events. 
you're going to want to see them. You want you're going to want to experience them. You're going to want to be a part of them. Yep. Bit.ly slash streamathon 2018 sign up and yellow420.com slash RMP 200. Um, we might uh, we might open up some of that in the post show uh, before we grade somebody tonight. So stick around if you're watching live, and uh, we'll we'll start getting some some of that stuff done. Hey, dude, where can people find out about you, man? Uh, I hear Del Noche is a is a word you use a lot. It's like yeah, it's, man. Like, it's like what you say at the end of every speech. You're like, uh, and that is why the white man landed on Plymouth Rock. And destroyed the sensuality that was the Native American uh, culture. Del Noche. <laughs> that was, wow, you're bringing up old shit because that's, that's the speech that I gave at our graduation, right. uh, which, right. you know, might have seemed completely out of nowhere. But it well, wasn't nearly as odd what, what, what people as, don't understand. You, as you following that speech up <laughs> with, like, the truth lies in Roswell, New Mexico, and Atlantis. Find these locations, and you will see the actual truth of Earth, Ethan Kane. Right. No, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was just I was just taking uh, taking a cue from you. I mean, people think that that little that speech right there was, I mean, that's verbatim. That's the whole thing. You, there was no intro to that. That's, that's is literally two sentences. And uh, I, I just, I, I was inspired by that and I had to tell people about my, my truth, you know? Yeah. So two sentences is about all I can put into a tweet. Right. And if yep. you're interested in what those might be, uh, I am RM underscore Del Noche on there, but just about anywhere else on the web, I am Del Noche or Del Noche 77. But yep. Twitter is really where I spend my time. RM underscore Del Noche. What about you, man? Ethan Kane on the Twitter, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. And if you want to find my takes on some of the latest news of the week, you can cruise on over to IQMZ Tech. Just type in IQMZ, the letters IQMZ, the word tech, T-E-C-H, in your podcatcher, and uh, you'll hear me and Odocta, Owen J.J. Stone, going off on the biggest news of the week from a non-reporter, just an average guy kind of point of view. So, Dude, yeah, I will vouch for that. I have listened to all 11 published episodes of IQMZ Tech. Love it, love it, love it. Give me more, give me more, give me more. Keep it coming. Should be one out tonight. Uh, well, probably tomorrow by the time I actually get to editing. It. But yeah, that'll happen. Um, yep. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter. And of course, we are live every Thursday-ish at 7 p.m.-ish Pacific time-ish uh, <laughs> on twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery and diamondclub.tv. Cruise on by either one of those locations and catch us live. Join the chat room and tell us how you really feel. And uh, we want to give Kevin McLeod some some props because he's awesome and he allows us to use his music for our intro and outro for most of our shows, actually. And, uh, yeah, thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. I gave you some space. See ya. <laughs> you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y There was a little bit of a pause there. I thought you were going to forget it. I was going to go ahead and sing it myself. <laughs>